I Anna Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, we love making you laugh. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. It's um, our business now um, and just something we enjoy. But today we're actually here to talk about something more serious. Yeah, there's a real friendship behind the fanny packs and <laughs> the Joanna Gaines wigs. There is a real friendship yes. that has survived some hard things this year. Yes. And one of those was um, a late term loss for my pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Um, we lost a little girl when we were 18 weeks along, and we thought, since the heart of this project is a friendship and is relationships, yeah. we know that you guys have relationships that are precious to you and odds are really good if you have not experienced a miscarriage, someone you love is going to at some point in your life. And so we thought, well, how can we make a video that um, sort of uh, reaches back and uh, equips people to be good helpers because I certainly didn't know what I needed before I lost my baby and I don't know that you knew how to <laughs> be an amazing helper. She actually researched it and we'll talk about that, which was amazing. Um, but yeah, that's what we want to talk about today. Mm -hmm. Let's go back in time yeah. for a minute and I would love for Michelle to just talk about what it was like from the perspective of someone who yeah. um, was trying to help uh, her friend. Right. Well, first, I remember getting the text that something wasn't right mm -hmm. and um, just praying Mm -hmm. that that wasn't it wasn't going to turn out bad that it was going to turn out okay and then you know one thing led to another and we found out that she was gone and um just falling to my knees and just being so sad for my friend um but i'm a doer <laughs> i can't sit still uh so i needed to do something and i knew it was a really sad time for you and matt and you needed to be just the two of you. Mm -hmm. I'm and an introvert, so yeah, she wisely knew that I did need some time to myself, but not not, not as much as I thought. Right. I also needed to be smothered too. <laughs> <laughs> In some ways, yeah. So one of the first things that I did as a close friend walking this journey with Leanne was I called another gal that I knew had, had suffered several uh, late-term losses um, of pregnancy and uh, two miscarriages, two stillbirths. And... Um, and just said, what do I do? <laughs> and she gave me a list of things to do and I kept talking to her and I kept running things by her. I want to bring this to Leanne. Do you think that'll be okay? And having mm -hmm. someone who'd been there is on the other side of that journey was such a good reference point for me yeah. to know what to do. It was huge. Um, when she, I'm going to try my best not to cry, but I don't know how realistic that is. <laughs> um, when she showed up to the hospital, she had a box and I remember she was like, I brought all the things. And I was like, I don't, I don't know what things I need. I have no idea. And she had this beautiful white box. And if you, so it doesn't matter when a miscarriage happens, obviously it's devastating. If it happens a little bit later in the pregnancy, you have to deliver the baby, which is what happened to us. So in the case of a very late miscarriage or a stillbirth, there are some options that I did not even think about. And one was um, to have the baby's footprints on a piece of paper, to have a, a precious box to keep the blanket that they would wrap her in. And things like that. Um, so she got me this beautiful white box for all of her keepsakes and they're all still in there and every now and then we take them out and we look. Yeah. I got it. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. Um, we look at them we, and we talk about her. Yeah and that's what my friend had told me was that later on you know she's gonna want to go back and remember mm -hmm. and she's gonna want photographs and she's gonna want items from the hospital that the baby touched that came, you know, a bl the blanket that came skin to skin with her, the hat that was on her head. Yeah. And Leanna's going to want that someday. And she had no way of knowing that in the moment. So I ran and got the box and I got all the things and I got snacks and I got maxi pads for after. Essential like, oils oh. to, to um, diffuse in the room yes. and just, just real um, thoughtfulness, practical comforts, but also she was anticipating my needs in six months when I would want to be looking at these mementos because it's, it's what's left after the baby's gone, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And just trying to think about those things that were kind of more to-do list things and to give her the freedom to grieve. And she also, this is another like super practical thing. She went to my house and packed up anything that was maternity in my closet. She got it out of my closet. So I didn't have to go through that painful process when it came home. That was huge. Yeah. That's another really good thing. Vertex had sent you a beautiful infant <sighs> baby carrier and yeah. I, a car seat, infant she car seat. Moved it to storage. Put it in, the, in the shed. I put, I put all your maternity clothes in. Yeah. And you hid the diaper. Jujubee had sent us a beautiful diaper bag. She hid it so I didn't have to look at it and yeah. be reminded. Yeah. I mean, is anything that could help her um, pr just process it? I mean, nothing was going to take away the grief, nothing was going to bring that baby back. But um, whatever I could do to help my friend. 
have a little less that she had to do um, and so she could just lean into her grief mm -hmm. and process those emotions was something I wanted to do. Yeah. Some other things that my friend Beth had shared with me was to uh, mark down the date that it happened in my yeah. calendar. And, and we haven't passed the anniversary when she found out she lost Marion, but I have it in my calendar now with a week notice. So in the future, I'll know, is Leanne seem off? This is why. Because so many people, yeah. you know, and then you're going to have another baby. Mm -hmm. And so many people think you just move on. But as moms, we don't always just move on. There's just always a piece of us there. And there's always that loss that's going to be there. And so as her dear yeah. friend who spent a lot of time together, and, <laughs> um, you know, I just want to know, like, you know, I didn't anticipate that, or, you know, to, to give her a gift or, you know, talk her through it or just let her know, I know this is going to be a hard week for you. How can I help? Can we take a time? Can we take days off? What do we need to do? Yeah. Um, and the other thing was the due date, which is coming up. Mm -hmm. I've been about two weeks. Yeah. 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 And you know, that that's been on my calendar, my heart, and I've been praying for you and thinking about you Thank knowing you. that's coming. Um, and I actually got you a gift. Um, I, I was going to wait and give it to you, oh, <laughs> but uh, I thought now was a good time, but you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really I don't mean to make you cry. I'm trying. <laughs> I don't mean to make you cry. But the thing is, is Marion um, existed. She kicked. Her heart beat. She had brain function. She um, unfortunately was born before she was viable. Um, at 18 weeks gestation, she, she could have never survived. And, and she had some problems, too, that probably would have never been viable. But She had really bad blood clots. And so the odds of her being born and having a normal life were next to nothing yeah but she was real she was so real she's still real mm -hmm. i remember um your uh rosalind her big sister doesn't she kind of writes backwards sometimes yes and she kind of writes backwards sometimes and i remember i took your kids one day that's the other thing is taking your kids and giving you a time long because it's so hard to parent when you're grieving it's so hard to smile for your kids and try to and we homeschool <laughs> so I, those first few weeks i was lost at sea and to have her swoop in and say well i'm taking the kids i'm feeding them lunch and then we're going to the playground and you lay down and cry was amazing like that's another huge thing you can do right and the kids too i mean they're all, leanne you're so strong and you did a great job of but letting them see your grief and letting yeah. them experience it too because they, they experience loss as well. Yeah. But it was sure. just interesting to see little Rosalind and her mind and how it works. So you, normally she writes letters backwards and, or she writes them messy or whatever, like <laughs> a typical three or four year old. And, um, but I, I, she was writing names down for me. I was telling her the letters, how to spell these different names. And then she told me she wanted to write Marion's name and she wrote it crystal clear in the right order, perfect penmanship. And I was bawling. Yeah. It was just like, she was so real, Marion, so real, and yeah. um, to all of us. And her name was is Marion Bloom. And I found this this summer, and I just knew that it was for you to. Oh uh, boy! Oh, that's so sweet. Is it a headband? Yeah. <laughs> it's really pretty. It's just a hand. I it's love a it. handmade. It's a headband, and it has Leanne's colors, and it's just... And yours. Very yes, it does have mine. Um, but, you know, just that Marion bloom, and she blooms still in all of our lives, and just a little something to know she's never going to be. Yes. Um, Thank you. It's beautiful. Um, I'm trying to think of other things you did that were so helpful. You know what? It's really nice for moms to have something with the baby's name on it. Like, I had a couple friends, and one friend got me a necklace that said bloom on it. Um, and another one had her name like in a jar. Um, just like precious little things with that child's, if, if the mother is far enough along to know the gender. But if not, if she doesn't know the gender or she chose not to know the gender, it was too early, the baby's due date or the month that she lost that baby because that baby is still so real to that mom. I mean, it takes a second. You look at the positive pregnancy test <laughs> and you build a dream. That's just how it is. And so, um, and as I think, if I think of anything else that was helpful, well, I know I someone sent you a framed ultrasound. Yes. With her oh, name. yep. Yeah, and the meal train. I mean, we talk about people having babies and mm -hmm. bringing them meals, and we use food tidings for you. Yeah, we did. Yeah. So there's a website, foodtidings.com, mm -hmm. and so we set that up, and people could, for about a month, they signed up to bring you guys a meal mm -hmm. every night, and just taking that off your plate. Yeah. Is so nice, and and, and to to realize that even after a loss. You know, you're not, not going to feel like a good dinner. Yeah. It's like I said, parenting with grief. It, if it's you, if you're the one watching the video, 
and you're walking through it. You just have to remember your work right now is to grieve and that is so hard. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be brave. You need to go through it and experience the fullness of it. Um, don't medicate it away. I'm even going to tell you not to wish it away. Don't wish that it could be faster because if you walk into it and you experience it, I will, I will tell you the, the first month, and you, you could probably attest to this, the first month was for me excruciating. And I think for a lot of women that I've spoken to since who have experienced loss, they say the same thing. The first month is excruciating, like hard to get out of bed excruciating. And then once that passes, um, then the, the pain starts to change a little bit. It doesn't go away. Um, but if you can just walk into it head first, it's gonna get softer and softer as time goes on because your life keeps getting larger and larger. So anything becomes smaller over time, good or bad, it just does. Um, so another good thing is to remind yourself daily, I am, I am in the heart of it right now. I'm walking into the heart of this thing and I just have to face it. Uh, lean on people, tell them how to help you. For me, I mean, the meal train, I hate to cook. Michelle knows that I hate to cook. The food tidings was so huge for our family because putting meals together felt like an impossible job. Um, and so that was such a blessing. And just be really, really kind to yourself and acknowledge that the grieving is the work. The standing still is the work. And that's what you have to exist through for a while. And then you start to feel like yourself again. And then you put pants on again and you go on a date you know, with your husband and you feel a little more normal and you have a good day and you realize, wow, I haven't cried yet this morning. And, and that's nice. And, uh, and, and that's, it's okay to be happy too. It's okay to realize I didn't cry today. And there's nothing to feel guilty about. The baby's never gonna leave you, um, but, uh, but it is a process. It's a lot of work. I remember getting cry, cry, cry counts from you. Yeah. Early on, like I cried once today, I cried twice yep. today, and, but that's so good to have open communication with someone who's close to you, who knows like today's a bad day, like yeah, um, you know you need to be flexible with your plans, or you know today was a good day and I'm feeling okay, but I'm kind of feeling guilty about it, and, like all yeah. those things just to have so much um, room, and it was that was hard for me during that time because our, so much of our friendship is built on laughter mm -hmm. and being silly and having fun. Yet that was that was not appropriate. Clearly, when Leanne was in her darkest, darkest mm -hmm. days. Um, so I remember when we were, we spent time together. It was it was really mentally taxing for me because everything that came out of my mouth, I thought it through so thoroughly because I needed to think: Is this going to be a trigger? Is how is this going to be received? Which was the right thing to do, I think, because mm -hmm. I think I I probably screwed up a couple times, and I would ask her. I would always ask, oh, "How am I doing?" Screw up. But I would ask you, remember, I would say, how am I doing? Am I doing, am I doing enough? Am mm -hmm. I doing too much? Because <laughs> like, I would come, you know, my nature is to come in and fix it all. Um, and there's certain things like taking the maternity clothes out that are great, tangible things. But, you know, I also need to give, had to give you space too. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I think you navigated that beautifully. And really, really the only, there's no wrong thing. I, okay, I shouldn't say that. There are wrong things you can say to someone who just lost a baby. You can tell them that, thank goodness it happened now, not after they came out of you. Like there, there are wrong things you can say. Don't say that. But honestly, if someone who's just experienced a loss really senses that you're trying, you're not gonna goof it up. Mm -hmm. You're not, even if you don't phrase it perfectly. Uh, if you show up and you're listening and you're there, you're gonna know what to say. You're gonna know how to navigate your friend's needs. And if you don't know what to say, Tell your friend you don't know what to say, mm -hmm. but I just want to sit with you and help you however I can. Um, I've said that to friends who have had hardships in other circumstances. I, I don't know what to say to you right now, but I love you and I want to help. So if there's anything I can do, yeah. you let me know. Um, it's, there's no magic words that you can, if you say them in the right combination, you're going to take your friend's pain away, obviously. Um, but I just want to encourage you guys to, like after, after a miscarriage, um, my faith is a big part of my life. It just is. And um, my faith became stronger. It was tested through that experience. And I can tell you that it's more real to me now. The people who you love are going to feel more dear to you because they show up for you. Uh, your ch if you have children, those children, you see them with new eyes. Um, there, are, there are beautiful things that come out of trials. And I know we know that, but when you're walking through it, it's, it seems impossible to see what's beautiful about what could be on the other side. Um, the name Marion, I didn't know this when I picked it. <laughs> it means sea of bitterness. And her middle name is Bloom because 
I believe, <laughs> here I go <laughs> um, I believe that's what she taught us to do, is you walk through the thing that you think, I can't possibly overcome this, I can't possibly get to the other side of it, and something beautiful is born. And she came to us on, uh, on Good Friday, which is a very central day for my faith, um, and I don't think that was an accident either. She came on a day that represents loss and pain before beauty and redemption. Yeah. You're going to feel um, at certain times like you're the only one in the world who remembers your child. Mm -hmm. And I remember there was one day where you called me and you called just to say, um, I just want you to know that I really miss her today. Do you remember that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That was everything to just yeah. for a second feel like oh I'm not missing her all by myself today like someone else remembers her loves her and misses her um, and if you can do what Michelle did and set um, a calendar reminder for when your friend lost their baby that's next level <laughs> just some ideas of ways that you can show up for your friends um, I hope I'm not talking to you I hope I'm not talking to the woman who's walking through it but if I am uh, you just know that you're loved and that um, it's okay to lean into the people around you who love you and care about you and don't be afraid to do that. I love you. I love you back. <laughs>